So the next talk is going to be by Alessandro and Andrea. And that's perfect. Okay, hello everyone. So our talk is going to be about rated ranking evaluator and open source approach for search quality evaluation. The talk is going to be divided in three phases. An introduction about search quality and search quality evaluation. A description of the framework and tools we developed, which is rated ranking evaluator. And then a demo showing it. So a little bit about myself. My name is Alessandro Benedetti. I am a software engineer specialized in search. I work as a search consultant, R&D software engineer, and director of my own company, so a lot of business-related things. I have a master in computer science. I'm a passionate about Apache Lucene and Apache Solar, and also on integrations such as machine learning integration with search and semantic and natural language processing. And in my spare time, in summer, I play beach volleyball, and in winter, I snowboard. Andrea, my colleague, is a software engineer starting in 1999. Hermit, so he usually works remotely and on its own. Passionate about Java, and is a committer of Apache Cupid, husband and father, and contributor to all the projects mentioned. So we work at CISA. We are open source enthusiasts. We are based in the UK, in London, but we are geographically distributed, and we mostly work on open source, open source search technologies, in special Apache Lucene and Solar. Our focus as late is on learning to rank, document similarity, and specifically the Apache Lucene more like this, and related integrations. Search quality evaluation, which we will talk today, and relevance tuning. And this is just a list of our clients. Okay, so let's introduce what is search quality, what is search quality evaluation, and why it's important. So search quality is important for various stakeholders. So the business would be focused, and for the business I mean the final users and possibly the, the owners of the business, will be focused on correctness, robust, robustness of the system, reusability, maintainability and extendability from a cost perspective. While the software engineer and the search specialists are going to be interested in search quality from the point of view, are we actually providing the best results to the user? So we, we use the search technology in the best way. Is it testable? Is it reproducible? And specifically why correctness is important. It is important in the development cycle. So when you, when you have your search team, the developers working on a project, on different iterations of the project, they want to communicate to the business, to the business layer, the improvements, or regressions if they happened. And also, they want to be able to show. So it's like, is this costly operation that cost you six months for uh, an entire search team actually produce some value? And sometimes just words are not enough, and you need to show not the code in this case because they wouldn't care about the code, but at least numbers and results. So show, yes, effectively, we improved search quality through these metrics. And this comes how you can evaluate search quality. So there are various metrics you can use. Offline measures, which are independent of your search system, and are independent of your runtime search system. So they can be calculated offline. They don't need to be related to your production environment, to your running server. And, and these metrics are like, we already been talking about that, for example, during the Learning to Rank talk. So like precision, F measure, NDCG, recall, mean receiver rank. There are a lot of metrics you can use for offline evaluation of your search quality. And when you evaluate your, your search quality, you need ratings, of course. So you need the ground truth. You need to know what's good and what's not. And then you can calculate the metrics on top of that. And then you have online measures. You can actually evaluate your running system. So your production environment, you can check, for example, is people clicking on the results? Is people engaged with what we provide? Are they abandoning the, the search interface? Are they getting a lot of zero results query? So 
here comes the rated, rated ranking evaluator, which is an open source software to help the software engineer both in the development phase and to justify and show the benefits of um, recent development to the business. So we started showing RRE in London at the Vashi Lucene Solar Meetup in June. At the time, it was just me and Andrea, and the life of the project was a couple of months, so it was a newborn baby. Then uh, at ASTAC, the relevance conference by Open Source Connection in London in October, we show the improvement, of course, like a lot of happened. And for so then 2019, because it's not in the past, we, we had like a grown base of contributors. The RRE is effectively a set of tools, so it is a framework composed by different libraries and different possible integrations. So this slide may be a little bit confusing, but you, the, the focus is you have a library core, which is the equivalent of Apache Lucene for Apache Solar and Elasticsearch, and then you have a lot of different components, some of them in the roadmap, some of them already developed, that provide an interaction with the, with the library. Okay, so this is a set, so just to, to go back a little bit, the, the, the different components are going to, to provide a Maven integration, so you, you can run like a Maven build to be able to evaluate the search quality of your system. And we talk about offline metrics, so r and will allow you to calculate offline metrics on your search system given a set of ratings. So this is a set of, of, the, of the available metrics. It's not so important right now to go through them. So it's just, we implemented a set of them. From time to time we will contribute more, and of course potentially other contributors can. Let's introduce the way the, the information is modeled in RRE to allow the user to model the ratings in input that will allow the system to know what's relevant and what's not relevant, and then we allow the system to produce results that are easy to be navigated. So you have an evaluation iteration that will run on a rating set on a specific system that will be characterized by a set of configuration. The system can have different corpora, so you can imagine you have different collections of data, different domains, for example. Within the, the corpus, you may optionally have different topics. For each topic, you may have different query groups that produce the same results, and each query group can be represented by effectively different queries. And you want to calculate on each query what are the metrics, and then be able also to navigate what's, what's for the query group, the aggregation of the metrics, what's for the topic, corpus, and the full. Not everything is, of course, uh, required. You just require the corpus, so you want to, I mean, you need to identify the collection you want to evaluate, and the query. So you don't need that, I mean, if you have the topic, it's better for you, you're going to model the data uh, in an easier way to navigate, but if you don't have it, it's fine. It's not mandatory. So you have an input layer for RRE, where you model your ratings, so effectively, you need to build a ground truth. You need to identify your potentially topics, query groups, query, and associate documents to the query with a rating. This can be done, as we've seen in learning to rank you can do that explicitly or implicitly. That's not the focus of the talk, but anyway, we assume that for harder to work, you have a set of ratings. Then, you have the evaluation layer, which effectively is RRE with the, the, lab, the internal libraries that will be able to take the rating set and then run the queries against your search engine and based on the results coming from the search engine, give you back the results. So how is it performing according to the ratings? Then for each iteration that you want to, to generate, so whenever you say, okay, I want to calculate the search quality of my system, will will output the results navigable 
in a tree-based structure. So you can navigate like, okay, I want to, to see the results and higher level, just I'm interested in the topics, I'm interested just in the corpus results, or I want to, to go deeper. For example, I am a developer, I'm interested in some specific queries that, I'm fail, that are failing, and I want to explore them. So this is more for an offline use, because the slide is quite intense, but it just show you a, a, the, the way of working for RRE. So what you can do is, uh, so I'm, we were talking about the, the fact that you can evaluate your system. So to evaluate your system at the moment, what you need to do is you need to reproduce the configuration of the system, and RRE is currently compatible with Apache Solar or Apache or Elasticsearch, and what we'll do, we'll spin up an embedded instance of your uh, server with the configuration you provide and use that embedded in the instance to then calculate the results. So a corpus, as I said already, is going to be a collection. So it can be basically an index, can, can be an Elasticsearch collection or a solar collection. Generally, you want to identify the, the domain and, and then you can run the quality evaluation on that specific domain. The configuration sets is what define your search server. So it can be, again, solar configurations, for example, or a RASIC search configuration, the index structure, the way you model your queries from a configuration perspective. And then you have like, the possibility of defining query templates. So your query can just be a free text search, just query terms, or potentially they can use like specific boosting, uh, additional filtering, and, and this of course is, is like a various example. They can be like, there are, uh, they can follow an Elasticsearch syntax, they can follow a, an Apache Solar uh, syntax. The ratings, so the ratings, you, you give an input effectively from an array perspective are going to be a JSON file that defines the queries, define the document, and then define how relevant the document is for that specific query. So you can specify the gain per document, or you can specify I have for this rating, this set of documents. And in the, in the evaluation output, you're going to have the, the same structure you provided in the rating set, so the same tree, and you can explore uh, digging down to the tree hierarchy and seeing the various metrics calculated. Lower level, so leaf level is going to be per query, but you can navigate up to the query groups, topics, and then corpora. There are various ways to see the output. Uh, you can have like basically an Excel uh, page with all the results according to what you calculated, or you can have a dashboard currently that we will see at the demo that show you for the different topics, query groups and query, the various metrics, how they perform in the last iteration and how they compare with previous iterations. Because of course, it's really important to be able to compare. Uh, in, the, in the previous iteration, for example, we got an improvement with these metrics, but we, we got a regression the, uh, in comparison to a, a much older iteration, for example. So this is going to be, so there are different aspects. So it's going to be useful both for the software engineer that effectively needs to debug specific queries and debug like, uh, and also um, evaluate how the system is performing. And it's also good for the business layer to quickly understand. So they may not be interested in the list of documents per query. So if they're relevant, they're not. But they may be interested that overall, the collection is, is doing well. So even in the last sprint, after three weeks of development, we got an improvement in precision by this percentage. There are various questions, of course. Is an evolving system? Is still in development, so is improving slowly? And, and there are various questions like, is it possible to persist the evaluation data and then compare them afterwards? Uh, I don't use Java, and how, because it's written in Java already, but it's possible to be integrated effectively through Maven with other platforms, so you, you don't really need Java, but potentially if you want to contribute, it's, it's written in Java. And various other questions that we'll skip for now, and we'll go um, with the demo, which is going to be presented by Andrea, that will show you a use case of RRE, 
So starting from the book Relevant Search by Doug Tarnbull, we will follow some examples from the book, seeing how you can check the search quality of your search system, understand where are the pitfalls, approve, uh, approach like with uh, modifications in the configurations, and then see how they contribute to the improvement of the system effectively. So, good afternoon. I am Andrea Gazzarini, the guy you've seen in the previous slide. And uh, first of all, it's my fault, FOSDEM 2018. <laughs> I'm the responsible, and I will change later. And as Alessandro said, uh, this is a brief walkthrough. Uh, for demonstrating, uh, I mean, uh, the, how uh, RRE can be used for, for doing uh, some search evaluation. We uh, provided in GitHub, in our GitHub repository, a um, uh, demo repository, uh, so you can have a, a look, you can download it, you can play with it. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a, mm, are a re-enabled project, basically. It's, uh, there's no Java code, because you, RRE is written in Java, but you don't need to know Java, because uh, we have only a couple of requirements, Maven and Java, of course. But uh, all what you need to do is uh, to run, uh, to provide, of course, all those files, those data that Alessandro said, and uh, that has nothing to do with, with Java and uh, mm, you need to run some commands because at the moment the, 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 the RRE, as Alessandro said, is a, uh, uh, there is a core, but the runtime container, the implementation is basically a Maven plugin, so you can inject the, uh, the, the quality evaluation process in your build process. And uh, for this demo, we used the, the, some examples from uh, relevant search with the dataset, which is an extract of the M TMBD. And uh, uh, we are using, uh, as uh, the, the, like what happens in the book, uh, Elasticsearch, a uh, specific version of Elasticsearch 632. So the index shapes, uh, the schema, the elastic search schema and the query shapes are, are coming from that book and are elastic search uh, queries. Um, but if you want to start a new project, we, if you want to create an RRE enabled project, uh, there is uh, uh, the, the wiki, the RRE wiki, which explain exactly how to do that. We, we, we can try now, but it's just a matter of uh, um, <coughs> Mm. The, the only thing at the moment is our dependencies are not in Maven Central, so you need to configure uh, in your Maven settings the CIS repository, but in the wiki there is all, all uh, explained. So um, we can create... Oh! Yeah. Okay, I should have. Uh, we basically provide as part of the RRE itself a module which is a Maven archetype which creates, which gets, of course, some parameters related with the, the search platform that you want to use, Solar or Elasticsearch, which version, uh, your group ID, your artifact ID, and uh, 
mm, disease in uh, oh sorry demo effect yes this is been success so at the moment I, I've created a, a narrowly enabled project that, c that can I load in my ID. Uh, open. And here, just to have a brief look, this is what you create. Uh, you can see that there are under the source ATC folder, which is the default, but you can change it through the archetype, several subfolders. Each folder contains uh, those data that Alessandro explained. So the configuration sets that are specific to Elasticsearch, the corpora, which is a sample corpora, is not the TMBD here, but is a just a sample and uh, following the same path, the rating example, and some query templates. The, the archetype also provides a couple of simple iterations, 1.0 and 1.1, with some configuration. This is the basic configuration, and here in the second iteration, the user decided to add the stop words. So, uh, under each folder, there is a readme file that explains, uh, I mean, what is supposed to contain the folder. And uh, in the uh, <coughs> Maven POM project object model file, you can see how to configure. You can decide which metrics you want to, to see. You can, you can use the default settings also for folders, for uh, fields that you want to see in the results. Uh, and uh, some other, the, the, the RRE wiki will in, includes, uh, sorry, all the uh, available parameters. You can tune the evaluation process. So on another workspace, I uh, cloned the, the, um, the demo repository. And here uh, we can see there is a, a more complete example with data uh, from relevant search, with some data from a relevant search loaded. And uh, we have uh, seven iterations. What is an iteration? It's uh, basically um, internal or external iter development iteration. At the very beginning, we would have uh, only one iteration, the verse 1.0, 0, 0. 0.1, whatever you call it. And uh, uh, an iteration, a version, is composed by a index shape, I mean, the, the, the configuration of Elasticsearch, the mappings, and here we can see that we won't start with the default configuration in empty, the schemaless mode. Uh, the corpora is the, the TMDB uh, dataset. And we have uh, the main input file, which, is, uh, the rate, which contains the, the, the ratings. So for each topic, for each query group, for each query, we are going to describe uh, what are the um, relevant documents that we expect in order to um, execute the evaluation process and uh, get the evaluation measures. So um, uh, if I start <coughs> RRE, it will scan all the available versions, which are seven in this case. I'm going to use, let's assume that we are at the very <coughs> beginning, so we, are on, we have only the version 1.0. Um, I can use a, a filter. In the, it's one of the available Maven parameters. So um, I can run the evaluation process uh, using only the version 1.0. On the other side, I have uh, the RRE console, which is basically an Angular uh, web app, which listens for evaluation data. And it gets automatically refreshed when I run a build process. So 
if I oops sorry this is the okay if I run the evaluation process you can see that here already will we run only on one iteration, configuration version 1.0. And after I have to <laughs> ah, sorry. Ah, the screen is not so in the configuration file, I set only three metrics, precision at 1, precision at 10, and NDCG at 10. On the left side, you can see the RRE domain model. So you can see the, uh, the corpus, which is called TMD.bulk. The two topics, Space Jam and uh, Star Trek, the three query group under those topic and finally the queries basketball with cartoon aliens and patrick stewart and star trek patrick stewart here i can see the values of the computed metrics the, the evaluation session has been executed and uh, rre correctly computed the requested metrics okay here i can see some information it's not really useful until i create a new iteration because in this way that way sorry I will be able to see in which direction my system is, is going if there are some improvements um, here I can see that for example the basketball with cartoon aliens is not performing so good actually bad because uh, both the, the three measures are zero so there is another information that the console can show you. Under each query, I can see that for each version, I can see the top end results. Red means not relevant, blue means relevant. So here I can see why we have all those zeros. So uh, we won't enter in detail in the details about the differences between the several iteration, but let's say that at that a certain point of time the, the, the developer, the user created the version 1.1 here the difference is that instead of relying on, the, on, the, on a plain schemaless mode guessing mode of Elasticsearch <coughs> the user configured properly a couple of fields with the English analyzer so if I enable also the second version RRE will re-execute the evaluation version, but this time we'll use two versions and we would get some comparison data, sorry. Well, for each metric, we can see the version point one and version point, version point zero, sorry, and version point one we could see the metric value at query level and uh, how it is aggregated at upper levels. So I can uh, see that at corporate level, I have a loss of 0 0.5. So something is not going as expected. The basketball with cartoon aliens is still not good because uh, <laughs> I still have all zeros and if I see, the, the, if I expand the query, the, the top end result for each query, I can see that uh, I improved the number of results because uh, we moved, uh, can you see from, from, sorry, we moved from more than 1,000 to 84. <laughs> Items are still all red, so there is some difference they are not the same documents, but we are still at a bad point because you know you have the, those three zeros. So the, the developer created another iteration, let's say vers version 
and rerunning the, the configuration. The configuration in this case, the difference between version 1.1 and 1.2 is uh, in um, the boost that the user gave uh, to the, to the um, searchable fields in the query, not in the index shape. So once the build is um, completed, I can see that this time this, the basketball with uh, Cartoon Alliance performed good because uh, the precision at one is uh, one. That means that uh, the, the first result is good. The precision at 10 is, uh, doesn't have a good value, but if we uh, have a look at the rating files, uh, at the ratings that the user gave for this specific query, he um, configured just one relevant document, space gem. So uh, from the precision at 10 perspective, this is the maximum value that we can have because the, there is only one relevant document. And uh, at the same time, this is another thing that, uh, that uh, RRE allows you to do that. You can see the effect of the iterations, not only, let's say, horizontally on a specific query, but you can see also the, the, the <laughs> side effects or regressions on, on, on the other uh, queries. And here you can see that you see some red <laughs> button somewhere. So that means probably we fixed the first query, but something uh, went wrong in some other queries. Specifically, uh, Star Trek Padre Stewart, we, we see some uh, <clears throat> between version 1.0 and 1.1, there has been a loss because we moved to from, this is the precision one, the first column. And you can see that in the first iteration, we had uh, the first, the top item, which was relevant, while in the second, uh, it's no longer there. So that's the reason why we lose. And in the third, in the, in the third iteration, the, another item came back in the first position. The same, this is the precision and 10, the second column. We moved from uh, uh, seven relevant results for version 1.0 1.1 to four relevant results. So it's not so good. Um, you can do this reiteration how much times you want you can the, the the several iteration doesn't need to be necessarily releases but it can also be experiments so uh, you can do things like uh, this one and uh, okay here with this monitor is not uh, is not so probably is, is a little bit messy because here I'm enabling I'm enabling all the versions, so the result is a little bit. Uh, just a moment for 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 the build, but probably you you should have a big monitor for for dealing with uh, oops with, for dealing with such data. It's interesting because if you want to, this actually I enabled three metrics, but in usually you are working metrics <coughs> by metrics, especially if you have a lot of queries, if, especially if you have a lot of uh, versions. And uh, you, in this way, you can trace uh, down uh, a specific query, analyze uh, why he's it is behaving uh, in that way, uh, comparing with different version, the, why in the first version was good. Uh, I did uh, seven iteration and things uh, are not so good. So you can do this kind of analysis. However, you can use also the the filter, the filtering capability of um, the, the the Maven plugin for 
uh, reduce the number of iterations that you want to consider. So let's assume that we are at the end of our story. I have seven iteration. If I run all the iteration, I get uh, the, 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 the huge I mean, console. So I could be interested only in, in seeing uh, uh, the difference between uh, uh, the first and uh, the last iteration. So uh, a couple of months ago, we had uh, 1.0. Now, after a couple of months, we have, uh, mm, um, we have seven iteration. Okay, let's see what happened between all those changes. And here, uh, probably is a little bit small, but here you can see uh, that we have a lot of green, so green or yellow. So that means that our system uh, is stable through the different iterations or it, th there has been some improvement. The Star Trek Patrick Stewart, there is something that is not so good in terms of uh, average, uh, uh, in terms, sorry, of precision at 10 because uh, we moved from seven to four. So here there, there should be something that needs to be checked and probably fixed. And doing that, I can control my system and uh, I can uh, avoid as much as possible regressions and uh, unexpected, uh, let's say, side effects of uh, changes that I'd like to introduce uh, in, uh, for, for, for example, for mm, enhancing some query or improving some query. It allows me to have a, a, a look at the, at the whole system, let's say. This is, a, of course, a small, a small example because we have uh, three queries, so uh, I expect that in a production system, the file, the reading files, would contain a lot of queries, a lot of... Uh, that's the reason why we modeled the, the RRE in that kind of tree, because uh, it helps you to, to divide, to, to classify things uh, in topics, in topics groups, and so on. Sometimes, like in this example, this classification is a, li is a little bit uh, complex, especially when you have uh, simple systems or you have few queries. And that's the reason why a lot of th those uh, uh, nodes, uh, the query groups, topics are optional. You can omit them, you can have uh, uh, just uh, a list of queries. Um, I think, I think uh, that uh, it's more or less there is also this kind of explanation. We are working on that. We are working in general on this uh, RRE console because uh, um, here, for example, a nice addition would be to add uh, some kind of pop-up to, to that shows the, the Lucene explain for understanding why that uh, element is there in that position. Uh, we have a lot of ideas about how to improve, of course, the, 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 the framework. And uh, the, the framework is uh, uh, open source, so if you have some feedback, some ideas, some whatever, any, any feedback is warmly welcome. Um, I don't know if you want to talk yeah. about... We can go to the future works. So thank you, Andrea. We, we've seen how you can use RRE effectively on a, on a demo project. So this example was on Elasticsearch, but that, of course, is valid for Apache Solar as well. So it's, it strictly depends on your system. So you can, you can zoom a little bit and move to the latest work. 
and so configuring the queries, so configuring your system, so the config set directories we've seen in this example were for Elasticsearch, but you can imagine if you have a Apache Solar as a server, you, you will do a similar thing. So for, from the perspective of FutureWorks, we are working on the integration with Solar of a rank eval API, so basically giving the opportunity of integrating Apache Solar directly with RRE to, to push ratings to Solar and get back directly the ratings for your system. Then we are working on a Jenkins plugin, so this would be quite good to be integrated in your continuous integration and continuous delivery system because you would like to see after a release, for example, how the system is going. So that would be quite good to explore the performance on the system with a quick dashboard directly from, from your con CI plugin, so like Apache Jenkins, for example, or Atasha Bamboo for what matters. And one important point we are working on is how you build the inputs, so how you build your rating set. So building the rating set is actually the most tedious part because if you do that explicitly, uh, we will have the same problem of a learning to run project. So you will need people, you will need experts, you will need a crowd to do that. And they're not going to like to just put lines in a JSON file. So, you know, that's good for RRE to take it as input. It's good from a machine, not very good from a human. I mean, it's readable, but not very writable, let's say. So there are two possibilities we are working on at the moment. A judgment collector UI that will basically show to the user couple, so pair of documents given a query, and the user will be able to say which one is good and, and I mean, which one is better, actually or implicit collection, so you actually get the user interactions that can be clicks, add to cart, sales, whatever it's, is relevant in your business, and then you evaluate from, you evaluate the distribution of them and you extract automatically the ratings. So we have the same consideration that we saw at the learning to rank talk, so you will have implicit, which is, you know, cheaper, uh, much bigger in number, but noisier, while explicit judgments is going to be, of course, much more precise if you have like a good set of experts, but much more costly. But this is a way you can, you can improve the way currently RRE works. I mean, at, at right, right now, is, you need to provide the JSON and effectively you need to write it. So we are going to, to improve that side. And once you, once you collect the data, so once you collect your ratings, this is actually going to be quite useful because from the data you collect, you could actually make an integration, an indirect, indirect integration with learning to rank and, and build the training set out of the data you collected. And at that point, you will be able to evaluate your search and also actually improve your search relevancy. And this, this is just a, a brief slide about the, the, the problems you will have when you, when you move from, from data, from user interactions to a rating set and possibly a training set for learning to rank. We don't have the time to explore it, but the slides are available so you, you can take a look on your own. And, and the same will be how, how you estimate the relevance label. So for example, you, you want to take into consideration the clicks through rates, so impressions and clicks, for example, or bookmarks, or add to charts, sales, and based on that, understand what's relevant from a scale from zero to four, for, for example. And when you build your training set, if you want to integrate, for example, your Apache Solar learning to rank, you need also to extract the features you defined to train, to build the training set to a readable way, a readable version for Solar. So you will need actually to automate that part as well. And, th and this can be an improvement. So you collect the user interaction and then automatically you build the training set and if a configuration file for the features definition in Solar. So mm, this is 
the summary about RRE, so starting from the introduction, how it, the description of the, the framework, a quick demo, and some of the future words, and now it's time for the questions. We have one there. So the, the question is, if I have an Apache Solar instance uh, configured, what will happen with RRE? Will actually it re-index in memory and have an embedded instance of solar that will be used for evaluation or uh, what else? So the answer is, at the moment, you need to provide the configuration set and effectively RRE will run and spin up in memory, so in the memory that is dedicated to RRE, an embedded solar instance with that configuration, fill the data in the solar instance. So effectively, it, it's an embedded one. So the index will be on disk, depending on the configuration. And, and this is one way. Well, we are also working in integrating, actually, like instead of having to provide the configuration set and then spin up the embedded instance, trigger an, exist, an exist, existing or ready instance, like a QA, for example, instance. But yeah, the quick answer is yes, at the moment you're going, you going to embed that instance in memory, but the index will go anyway on disk. Uh, the one, one thing that we <clears throat> probably, I don't remember if uh, the, there is some slide there. Uh, RRD uh, has a lot of extension points where you can plug in your you are done. One of those extension points is the search platform. There is a kind of search a platform API, which provides uh, an abstract interface of uh, the life cycle of a search platform that RRE expects. At the moment, we have just uh, two uh, bindings, which are the embedded Elasticsearch and the embedded uh, uh, solar, but it's uh, very easy, and we are working on that to create uh, a remote search platform for uh, integrating RRE with a staging server, staging Elasticsearch or uh, solar. Does this answer the question? So, uh, so you mean if you switch the entire search system behind? I think I, I can't see this one. You could, you couldn't, but I don't know right now if it's going to work. There are, there are different systems. So the comparison. Wow, well, I'm just talking loudly because mm, interesting, mm, interesting question. Uh, Actually, you can't. You can't. I'm trying to imagine uh, what 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 is the constraint. I mean, from the code perspective, uh, but theoretically, maybe it requires some implementation, of course. But it's not an uh, impossible. So yeah, 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 sure. Uh, the, the question was if you can compare different versions from, for example, an instance of Apache Solar, and the following version is actually you completely change your search server and it's Elasticsearch. Yes, please. Uh, 
So the question is, what if you have like a custom plugin, such a query parser in your search instance, and you want to provide that uh, as part of the configuration set, effectively will be code. So, what? Yeah, it plays a little bit different between Solar and Elasticsearch. Solar, um, uh, the, 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 the visual machine that uh, is pinned up is just one. So basically, if you, if you have uh, this kind of need, you could uh, have, uh, um, instead of a uh, um, POM packaging, like the, the, the um, POM package, um, sorry, project packaging, you could have a Java, a JAR packaging, so you, you can have also Java code and with your query parts or, uh, or your add-on. And uh, in the configuration set, you are just referencing those classes and they are, they are picked up. In Elasticsearch, we, we had to do some change because, uh, um, uh, because the embedded uh, the version of Elasticsearch requires, at, uh, if I remember, at uh, constructor time that you give the list of the plugins. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, uh, the, the Maven uh, plugin, uh, the RRE Maven plugin for Elasticsearch allows you to configure metrics, fields, and so on, and plugins. So you can have uh, your plugins in the, 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 the source folder, and you can configure them through, through the Maven. Okay, thanks a lot. Other questions we will have to take offline. Um, yeah, thanks for your talk. Thank you.